thank you for giving me the opportunity to introduce to you a little bit the WARMIP project. And I think it's important because uh, in DCP, we, there is in, in C, there is this volcano compound component, and we heard a lot about volcanoes. So I think it might be good to get at least a brief um, idea or overview what we are planning in WARMIP. And we got to all these tedious processes to get uh, to become a CMIP 6 endorsed activity. And I think, luckily, I think we made it. And um, if you, you, you can find further information on our website, which is quite nice. And um, we have also a mailing list. Um, so if you want to be updated what we are doing, um, send, um, yeah, send me an email or go to this, to this link, and then you will be included. So this warm-up is um, it's led by Davide Zanchettin, Miriam Coderi, and myself. And there are a lot of uh, people involved, and in the scientific commi committees also Anne and uh, some other people you, you know. So, and um, actually, um, the idea or why we, we, we started this um, project was um, um, that we find a lot of uncertainties in the model results and in, in the volcanic response, uh, the climate response to volcanoes in the model results. And here is an example from the PMIP, from simulations for Tambora, where you see, is here a pointer, or otherwise I can go here. Here you see this is the optical forcing data set. Uh, which were mostly used to. One is the from Gao et al. and one from Tom Crowley. And you see that there are some uncertainties in the um, peak uh, AOD loading for the uh, Tambora eruptions, but also for the 1809. So we see there is already the forcing a difference. And then when you go a step further to the top of the atmosphere, clear sky net radiated fluxes, here are some model results. You see that we really have almost yeah, a factor of, of three for the top surface, uh, for the top tower clear sky radiation flux. So a large uncertainties in the radiative forcing. So and this makes it difficult to, to interpret what is really, um, yeah, what are the uncertainties or what is the difference in the simulated temperature response. And here you can see um, uh, this is a black, the black curve is the um, ensemble uh, is, the um, is the mean of reconstruction, and the gray shaded gives the uncertainty range. And you see in color in the different colors again uh, simulation results. So we see there is a large spread. And here the last panel show uh, this is just from our MPI model. The, the, the different different simulation, and we see also that there is a large of uncertainty. So this is this drives us actually that we say. We, will, we have to do something, we have to understand um, really the response and uh, to, uh, to reduce the uncertainties. Buddy? Yeah? Can you say a naive question? Um, for Tambora 1816, uh -huh. um, how do you even get those kinds of numbers? And how do you even estimate how mm -hmm. big the Earth ought to yeah. be? Oh, from, uh, from, from ice core, from Ellen, ice. it's my turn now. From, from ice core. <laughs> So and Anne, of course, was with, with Jim Gao. He, he, he they, they, they did it, and also Tom Crowley. So you, you have uh, volcanic records and ice cores, and you start to calibrate them with um, for for Pinatubo. So they look and, and start to calibrate them for the recent decades, and then you um, you'd start somehow with uh, tr aerosol tr with transport modeling to get an idea um, how much sulfur was actually injected in the stratosphere and then was deposited in Antarctic or Arctic ice cores. And then you get an idea how much it is. Of course, it, there are some uncertainties, but um, there are also a lot of efforts now to, 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 to improve this. So um, yeah, this is actually the, the thing one, one can get up. And there are also some, um, some other volcanic, volcanological, um, yeah, Evidence is that you look into the bubbles which you find in Tephra, then you have some in the melt inclusions, but this gives you um, at, at least more uh, uncertainties. But this is more for the really past, so really, uh, uh, yeah, long time ago, big volcanic eruptions. Okay, 
So looking to the clan defects, I don't want to go into detail. You will see it probably a little bit more, but just what I want to like to point out, you have here the volcano, it's which emitted as sulfur emissions into the uh, stratosphere, and then somehow um, they will be transferred or transformed into sulfate aerosol. And these are actually the particles which are interact with radiation, so lead to the aerosol radiating forcing, and this ha will have an impact on climate on the different compartments of our Earth system. And to do it a little bit more schematically, we have here the sulfur emission, which will be transferred in stratospheric aerosol. This will give us a radiative forcing, and then our, the impact on climate. Or to do it a little bit here more, so we have here from the source to the forcing, and then we have the other link from the forcing to the climate response. And um, actually, to, there is, of course, a way you can do it. You can um, consider everything together, but we try to do it a little bit. We try to separate it in the moment in order to understand each uncertainties before we do the whole picture. And so we have. We try to address this with global aerosol models, and there's some effort in the stratospheric sulfur aerosol community, CERC and SPARC. And then we have this for the climate models. So this is what wet warmit is about. So we don't really consider this way. We start directly with the aerosol forcing and say this is our forcing, and we are, on, we are interested, what is the impact? And so WALMAP in a nutshell is that WALMAP defines a common or tries to define a, a common protocol uh, so that we really can compare our different model results and say not, oh, we have, might we have a different forcing. Uh -huh. No, we have all the same forcing and we just look into the same response. So this is actually the important thing. We really want to have the same forcing. And th we, uh, we would like to do it with prescribed aerosol optical parameters. Of course, when you talk to Bjorn, he says there is still some uncertainties, but I think this is the way we are right now. And um, of course, even better would be an analytical function, what he has in mind. But of course, this, this is the way it is. And um, we will do two, or we try to do it in two columns, so two different kind of experiments. So one will be the immediate the, uh, so this is looking to the short time response, so um, more or less the atmospheric response like the northern hemisphere winter warming, so all the more seasonal impact, which is interesting, and the other would be more the decadal response, so with longer term simulations. And so here again, this is, a, this is the overview, and of course you cannot read it, but um, I will briefly tell you. So this is the, the red part is that what WALMAP is about, and we are planning actually for the short-term experiment um, as a tier one experiment, a Pinatubo one. It's, it's a little bit boring, everyone has Pinatubo, but there we have the best and the most observations of it. And we will, um, we will we, we suggest a large ensemble, so 25 members, and right now we have, say, for three years, so that we really get uh, from the multi-model and so on, we have a really large number and uh, for different ocean states that really cover a large, um, yeah, phase space. Also. You can't. And then in the as, as, as a tier two experiment and the CMIP six panel actually focuses, it should be tier one. So it will be maybe a tier, tier, tier two plus experiment. So, uh, or something between is that we um, uh, this, uh, uh, do two, experiments to understand what really drives the dynamical short-term response. When you look here, you see this is the aerosol layer. And of course, we have the scattering and the cooling. This is one part. But we also have uh, an uh, impact on the um, stratospheric temperature. So we have a heating. The aerosol absorb uh, radiation, and then we got the temperature gradient from the tropics for large tropical volcanic eruptions between the tropics and the higher um, latitudes. And this could also would suggest it to have an impact on the polar vortex and so on. There, so there are some uncertainties if the um, what really are the processes. So we actually say we would like to do both separately, and also then we have for Pinatubo also with 25 mem ensemble members. And then we will also do something um, for different ENSO states, 
to, to look at. And we said, and we listed, of course, the initialized peanut tubo experiment as a common experiment. But um, this is actually we listed as a STS3 experiment. But for to get to be endorsed, we want to have global modeling centers to do the experiments. And they p maybe have a <coughs> prediction system or not. So this is, but this is actually, I think, a, a strong link to, to you. Um, OK, so I made some thoughts. I started, and we might develop them during the next days. So WALMAP will have constrained volcanic forcing. And DCPP, I think, component C will be even, even more constrained. They will hopefully have also constrained volcanic forcing. And I really would like to, um, yeah, to push you to do it. Um, and then you have, you have, in addition, you have constrained boundary conditions due to the initialization. So you, you even reduce more the uncertainties than what you do when you have free running global models. And this could give you, a, this, this is a, I think, a great chance to, go to, to uh, look into specific processes and to, uh, to understand, yeah. So I think it's really a great complementary uh, thing. And what I think what could be, be like what we already had a little bit today is the um, interaction between volcanic eruptions and ENSO. So there was where after, or the El Chichon was ongoing, where his strong um, ENSO was ongoing. And there's some, some hints or there's some discussion that it developed in a different way than it would be expected, whatever one would expect. There were also some discussions about the IPO. Then, of course, the northern hemisphere winter warming, the seasons, the seasons goes more into the seasonal forecast. But this, I think, is a great, great thing to understand because the global models doesn't capture it. And uh, we, we really don't know why. So, and it might be helpful to understand um, yeah, when we really have the in initialized condition set um, what is going on. So then the importance of boundary conditions and the time of initialization, I just want to show you just quick three uh, things we, we di uh, which I did. Um, here you see this is from our MPIM model, uh, from uh, so perturbed uh, minus unperturbed. This is just the historic runs, northern hemisphere winter temperature. Then uh, we have where I did it with our MEKLIP system, baseline one, where we, where, uh, we initialized the system in 19, January 1990. And here we initialized it a year before, in 1989, and we got a completely different pattern for the normal hemisphere winter warming after Pinatubo. And this was actually, I said, wow, this is what I would like to see, something like that. And so I think, oh, great. And um, then I <laughs> look into again in this, this things like after, Pina, after El Chichon, and unfortunately, it, it, the, uh, the year before, so not 80, um, now I have to 82, 80. Not the 81 doesn't really look so good like a, um, um, 1989 for Pina Tubo. So I think this is, there's a lot of potential to go. Yeah, and, and then I thought maybe role of ozone, sea ice initialization, aerosol distribution. If you, if you initialize, one has to think about, then you really have the, um, yeah, the, 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 uh, the state of the system as it, almost as it was observed. So I can really think about maybe to prescribe or to do sensitivity test to prescribe the aerosols three in three dimensional as a forcing, not only the zonal symmetric forcing, which is okay if you look to the global picture or focus on the tropics. But if you want to look into the uh, northern hemisphere winter response, um, then a zonal prescription might not be the best choice. Yeah. And then I also think that this would really be great. If, we, if you could do uh, the uh, Dynva diagnostic, so that would give a, a lot of, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of potential for, for the interpretation of the atmospheric things, even if you are not personally interested in, but other people would, would love to do it. Um, yeah, and then I think and that there's also large potential for, for this decadal scale variability, for this, um, yeah, for longer, longer time response, like the delayed winter warming or after five or six years. So, I'm done. Thank you. <coughs> well, we'll hear more about, of course, uh, volcanoes tomorrow. A couple of quick questions, because we are running over. Um, yes, yes, yes. You quickly mentioned ozone. I just wonder what recommendations you'd have for 
our volcanic experiments in DCPP when it comes to ozone. I'm particularly thinking about when we put a volcano, say Pinatubo, into our 2015 forecast. Should we be using the 2015 ozone, or would it be, make more sense to use the, the Pinatubo ozone that was at the time on Pinatubo? I, I, would, I would use the, Pinat uh, the ozone anomaly, the, the volcanic induced ozone anomalies for Pinatubo and add them on the 2015 ozone. That was, this would be the simple, I, I can just right now think on. That's, that would be mine. So I'm trying to decipher your webpage. So it looks like fall short, 20 EQ full for the experiments where you're going to you're going to do a Pinatubo style eruption from like an El Nino basic state, La Nina basic yeah. state, neutral basic state. So those you have got those. That's, that's yeah, 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 yeah. We would like to spend. We would like to have like the wind. It shows 25 ensembles. We say, look, that you get maybe a, a strong El Nino and moderate El Nino. So of course it's not the same. But we got at least we have the face pace somehow. Uh, this is this is actually what we can do with global models. Yeah. Uh, the last millennium uh, simulation, the PMAP has set up a group for the volcanic forcing data set. In the past, they used the data from Chao Chao Gao and Ala. They now want to have a new trust, and they will know more. My question here is, do you have coordinations with them? Of course, we have coordination with, with PMIT, but PMIT sometimes they, they couldn't, they, they, they suggested two forcing data sets. One is the Gao et al. forcing data set, and the other was, is the Crowley et al. data set. And right now, it's not clear what will become for PMIP. But, um, it, but for our Tambora experiment, we, 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 do, we do some, because this is a dedicated study, and we do some right now global aerosol, uh, global aerosol model study for, with different global aerosol model where we have specified a Tambora experiment. And so I think four model global aerosol models, stratospheric aerosol model run this. And then we will provide a data set which will look like the Pina Tubo data set which, which from the CCM uh, provided from Larry Thomason, so that there will be not, in addition, um, effort for the model centers to adapt to a different data set. It would, would, would like the same. It would only be uh, reflect another volcano. So just to minimize the, uh, um, the, the, the effort. Okay, come up at the same okay, time, so because we must, we must I, I think this, <laughs> this suggests that we should do something really different about the volcano experiments of the component C because there is such a close relationship between, between volume and component and the intention of component C. Because so it's different. What's different? Not different than what they're dealing with in the Yates session. The, 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 we have something to, another group to really yes. coordinate with very closely. Yeah, that's, so that's why I'm here. And, and I think we could really do something really great. I yeah. mean, yeah, we have the...